F1 is on a break this week, but off track action heats up. This week has been a roller coaster. Here are the top stories for this F1 weekly debrief. After one of their worst start to their new season, Mercedes find themselves in fourth place behind Ferrari and McLaren. The team suffered a double DNF at the Australian GP. Coming into the weekend, Mercedes increased the car's height to deal with the bumpy track at Albert Park, but it created problems in the slow sections. Toto Wolff believes that FP3 demonstrated the car's potential, although it remains challenging to get it in the right place, and there is no easy solution at present. Meanwhile, technical director James Allison identified the key limitation of the Mercedes W15 as losing competitiveness in higher temperatures. The team's primary focus is on finding the right pace, which will ensure success throughout the season, regardless of any external factors. The team will work to manage issues such as tyre temperature, balance between high and low speeds, and overall performance. George worked on the simulator at the beginning of the week to help the team reach their goals and get a clear understanding of what needed to be done. The upcoming Japanese GP would be a good measure of where the car lies in terms of performance and drivability. Rain and cooler temperatures are also expected for the weekend at Suzuka. Formula One is planning to reintroduce the driver-operated Kerr's boost era by allowing a high-speed override mode function to its energy deployment power unit map from 2026. Under the new regulations, the turbocharged 1.6-litre V6 internal combustion engine element of the power unit will be reduced from 550 5 gene 60 to 400 kilowatts, while the battery element will jump from 150 to 350 kilowatts to replace the power loss. The override mode will allow drivers to deploy additional power to supplement the energy created by the glide path and provide a further boost up to 355 kilometers per hour. Furthermore, the FIA will introduce new chassis rules in 2026, which will make the cars between 40-50 kilograms lighter. The cars will have a shorter wheelbase, likely trimmed down to 3,400 millimetres from the current maximum of 3,600 millimetres. Max Verstappen is currently being pursued by both Mercedes and Aston Martin to sign with them. Aston Martin would have an advantage if they could secure the services of designer Adrian Newey, making their offer more attractive than Mercedes. This would include the opportunity for Verstappen to become a lifelong brand ambassador and be part of a globally recognised brand. However, both teams would need to work hard to improve their performance and match the level of Red Bull. Sebastian Vettel believes that there is a lot of unrest at the moment, but from a sporting perspective, there is no reason for Verstappen to think about anything else. Carlos Sainz put on an impressive performance at the Australian Grand Prix, catching the attention of several teams. Red Bull and Mercedes have acknowledged that he is a driver worth pursuing. Additionally, Audi, who will be taking over the Sauber team in 2026, reportedly plans to field signs alongside Nico Hülkenberg, reuniting the Renault 2018 partnership. On Tuesday, two days after the Australian Grand Prix, the boss of Aston Martin, Mike Crack, wrote an open letter to the fans regarding the time penalty that Fernando Alonso received in Australia. The stewards deemed Alonso's penultimate lap move defending from George Russell's Mercedes to be extraordinary as he lifted off the throttle for turn 6 100 metres, earlier than on any previous lap, accelerated, and then braked again before making the corner. Alonso claimed that he was attempting to enter the corner slowly to take greater speed out of it to defend from a DRS-armed Russell on the long blast to turns 9 and 10, and again down to turn 12. However, Russell was not expecting the move, and the dirty air caught him out leading to his panicked radio messages demanding a red flag after his Mercedes came to rest, lodged on its side. The stewards considered the move to be potentially dangerous and handed Alonso a drive through penalty that was converted into a 20-second time penalty, ultimately dropping him to 8th place in the results. He also received three points on his super licence. In the letter, Crack stated that Alonso would never put anyone in harm's way and that the penalty was a bitter pill to swallow. However, he mentioned that, without new evidence, a right of review request would not be possible. Will Mercedes rise from the ashes and reclaim their dominance? Will Verstappen become the newest silver arrow or will Aston Martin's new e-factor sway him? And was Alonso's move a brilliant defensive masterclass or a reckless gamble? Head over to the comments and let us know your thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more F1 action.